So for today's video, I'm going to be doing another edition of my discontinued makeup brands that no longer exist. Ooh, we're going to be talking about the ghosts of said makeup brands. See what I did there? Hell, spooky season. See, I'm decked out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're gonna be talking about some more makeup brands that no longer exist. Um, we're gonna be talking about three today. I felt like these were three big ones that people wanted me to talk about last time and ones that I remember stuff about. <laughs> but before we get into actually talking about the brands, I am so excited to say that today's video is sponsored by Warby Parker. If you have been watching my channel for any length of time, you would know that my glasses are Warby Parker. I'm pretty positive I have it linked in all of my descriptions besides these ones, which I think are, yes, these are Sadie's. These are Blair, which you've seen me wear in videos. These are the blue light glasses. And then I have a pair of sunglasses as well, which are Beale. I like these ones too. These are prescription as well. But Warby Parker is a glasses company. Their system is so simple. You go on their website, you can take a quiz to give like general ideas of what styles you might like. And while you are going through the quiz, you'll see that they go from extra narrow to extra wide. So there's glasses for all face shapes. You can pick five free pairs. They send them to you for free, get to have them for a week. You can try them on, you can take pictures in them, you can show your friends and family to see which ones you like, and then you send it back shipping free because they put a shipping label in the box. I actually have one here. <laughs> good things await you. And then when you pick the one you want, put in your prescription on the website and you order them. They do also have stores in certain cities where you can actually go in and get your eyes checked. It's a great resource, especially if you don't have like a regular eye doctor that you go see because it's all in one place. It's like you go, get your eye exam, pick your glasses out, you're done. <laughs> I actually have a personal story while I try on some glasses. This one is, oh, what is this one even called? Duncan? Duncan. These ones I'm in love with, but these are Duncan. I like them a lot. I feel very Harry Potter. But several years back when I ordered a try-on kit, I got it delivered to my home and I was living in an apartment at the time without a locked mailbox. This one is Louise. These feel very Louise, honestly. When I got home, I found nothing at my front porch and I went and I checked in my backyard and somebody had stolen the box and all of the glasses from my front porch. I panicked thinking that I was gonna have to pay for all of these and I got online immediately. I emailed Warby Parker and immediately they got back to me and was like, we're gonna send you a new box, good to go. Their customer service has always been great. I've always had a good experience buying from them. Waylon, those ones are kind of cool. I like them. The color is fun. I like these a lot. I did also get some sunglasses to try on because I was like, do I want a pair, another pair of sunglasses? I don't know. If you've ever seen Jujutsu Kaisen, I think of these as my Nanami glasses. They're a bit much. They're kind of a lot, but it was fun to try on and I wanted to see if this style was something that I liked. I don't know, how do you feel about it? Definitely a statement. <laughs> I like them, but these other sunglasses, these are my Gojo glasses. <laughs> Yes, I identify glasses and glasses shapes with fictional characters. I'm a dork. See, Gojo glasses. These ones are really cool. I like them a lot too. One of the things I also really love about Warby Parker is the price. Uh, the glasses start at $95 and you can tell because they're well-made, like they're not cheaply made glasses, they're well-made glasses. Warby Parker is also committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores. So if you use my link, you can actually find locations where they offer eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses, including brands like AccuView and Biofinity, if you prefer contact lenses instead of glasses. So there's options for everyone. Anytime anybody ever asks, oh, I love your glasses, where are they from? Warby Parker, for the last seven years, that's been my answer. So definitely go check them out at warbyparker.com slash abbyw and you can do the five free at home try on yourself and take some pictures, take some cute pictures for Instagram, see if you like it, see how people react to it, try them on for your significant other, for your sibling, for your parents, just see what other people like about them. Definitely go to warbyparker.com slash abbyw and thank you so much to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video. You have no idea how excited I was about this. Holy moly. So uh, let's get back to the brands. I feel like I've been talking for way too long. Let's get, let's talk about some discontinued makeup brands. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. So the first brand we actually are going to talk about is Tarina Tarantino. And this was one I mentioned in a makeup archives a little while back because I totally forgot that they existed <laughs> when I was looking at Sephora releases. I was like, Tarina Tarantino? Like what? 
what happened to that brand? Uh, I don't know really what happened to that brand specifically, but I found some information. So Tarina Tarantino, Tarina, I'll just call her Tarina, uh, is still a like fashion and design business. If you go to her website, there's still jewelry. There's still like a bunch of stuff there. It's just no longer a beauty line. I don't have the specifics of when the makeup came out, but the brand, like the design business started in 1995. So it's an old brand from what I found in 2012, they were removed from Sephora's website. And I got kind of conflicting information about whether or not that was them discontinuing the brand completely or just moving to Tarina's like own website. But for sure in Sephora in 2012, they were removed from the website and they were definitely pretty popular among the beauty blogs back in the day. Musings of a Muse, Makeup and Beauty Blog, Temptalia, Encore Makeup, Purse Buzz were some of the main ones. Um, if you've been around for a while, you'll recognize some of those names. When I saw Encore on one of these blogs, I was like, oh my God, blast from the past, holy moly. They exited Sephora in 2012, but Tarina did say in, in like a, a message, our partnership with Sephora will regretfully run out at the end of December, 2012, but don't worry, we are not going anywhere. The entire the entire Torino Tarantino beauty collection will soon be available online and at our flagship store boutique in Los Angeles. Please stay tuned as we announce future collections and new beauty retail outlets that will be carrying them. Thanks to all of you and Sephora for making our brand a sparkling success. So I don't actually know how long it was on their website or if it really ever came to be because I could not find any information about whether or not it was on the website. But the Torino Tarantino website still includes a bunch of earrings, very cute jewelry actually like very cute jewelry. I'm like, oh, I kind of want that. Like that's cute. It's expensive because it's designer stuff, but it's very cute. The Trina Tarantino makeup line was definitely in line with the kind of jewelry and stuff they have now where it's very sparkly. It's very glittery. It's very over the top 2008 to 2012. That kind of stuff was was popular. I don't know as much anymore. Like the kind of style has shifted and I feel like that time it was popular. And then eventually so many other brands kind of came up and they were just focusing on makeup that those fashion houses and those design houses that were kind of splitting their efforts between multiple things, including makeup, it wasn't financially viable. Um, so that's my theory of probably what happened is that like they just weren't seeing the ROI <laughs> with the makeup and they just focused on the jewelry and the fashion. And there is still a perfume. There's still a perfume on the website. I never owned anything from Trina Tarantino, but I definitely remember going into Sephora and seeing some of their stuff and browsing the website and seeing their stuff and specifically Purse Buzz talking about Trina Tarantino, like vivid memories of Purse Buzz in my head talking about Trina Tarantino because she was all about the sparkles and the brights and the rhinestones and the glitter. Elisa, I really hope you're doing well. Well, purse buzz. I really hope you're doing great. Next, um, Gemma Kid uh, was in Target. And Gemma Kid, actually, I remember being in Target. It was the one fancy brand. There was like uh, Pixie, Sonia Kashuk, and Gemma Kid. Like those were the three big ones that were fancier inside Target next to like Revlon and Maybelline. And with the fancy name came a fancy price tag. I did not realize that the eyeshadows were like $18. I'm like, that's more expensive than I would buy from like Sephora for a single eyeshadow. Like $18? for a single eyeshadow inside Target? Like how did that ever, I don't know. That was, that was surprising. I was like, what? $18? But they had lip products. They had eyeshadows. They had highlighters. They had foundation stuff. It was a UK based brand initially came over into Target. I believe it was also inside Boots, which is like the UK. I would say the UK equivalent of Ulta Boots would be. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. Yeah, Gemma Kid had such expensive eyeshadow. Oh my gosh. They had two different shadow lines, the high design and the eye design. The high design was like bright colors and then the eye design was neutrals. They apparently had pretty good color payoff. I mean, I would hope for $18, the color payoff was good. And I remember seeing them on the shelves on one of the end caps inside Target. And it was always very pretty, very well packaged. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Catrice, but like better quality. What happened, this is an article from 
what is this, Cut? The Cut? Gemma Kidd was one of the first former models to start an eponymous makeup brand in 2006. And she also runs her own makeup school and has written two makeup books, the second of which is slated for pu publication in November, I believe in 2012, when this was published. However, her products may not be around by then. She's just filed for administration, the British equivalent of bankruptcy. Um, it's according to the Telegraph. And she said, it's so sad, but it's not over. I was just too trusting. So I don't know like what happened at the end, but they basically filed for bankruptcy. What I said with Trina Tarantino, I think probably also happened with Gemma Kidd is that there were splitting, splitting efforts in too many places and it probably wasn't hitting the same way inside Target that they had hoped because that was quite expensive. Like that's expensive for Target. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm not going into Target expecting to buy $18 single eyeshadows. Like, huh? Like maybe a $14 liquid lipstick, but not a, not a single eyeshadow. Maybe palette, like an eyeshadow palette? Remembering kind of that period, Sonia Kashuk also being there and Pixie by Petra also being there, those prices were more reasonable for Target, I feel like. Sonia Kashuk was selling like $20 eyeshadow palettes and Pixie was selling like 10 to $12 highlighters. And so I feel like this brand was just above what was the norm for going inside Target. And around the time that it did file for bankruptcy in 2012, right? That was 2012. Yeah, 2012, both brands ended in 2012. She was like a celebrity makeup artist and other things. She's a celebrity in the UK. Back in 2008, mother of two, Gemma, rode the recession wave by pulling out of national chain boots and launching a diffusion brand. Her then financial director warned her the move would be cash suicide, but Gemma hit back saying, you live and die by the brand. This is from the Telegraph. And around this time you had bigger brands that were less expensive coming up and, and, and making waves. Brands like Makeup Geek uh, eventually made it into Target and brands like NYX was getting really popular. Like this, I, around this time, NYX was really, really reaching like a peak popularity because they had so many products <laughs> and so many different things that people could use that this was just more expensive than what people wanted to buy. If it had been in Sephora, might've been a different story. But the fact that it was inside Target, not really the best move in my personal opinion. I remember those though. I definitely remember Gemma Kid just like on the end cap. I'm like, oh, I never bought anything, but you know, Ugh. but a brand that I did own something from Coastal Scents. And this was one that I mentioned in my last video that I didn't necessarily want to deep dive in quite yet because LS had just done her deep dive. So I will link that video below again, because she goes into more of like the origin of the brand specifically, the owners kind of where they came from. Cause they did start actually as like a bath bomb company, like a bath body care company. If you look at old screenshots of their website, it's so quaint. Like it's so early 2000s quaint. It's, I kind of love it. So definitely go check out Elle's video if you want like the full tea on where the brand started and where the origin came from. And she has a whole series on brand origins. So definitely go check those out. Hers are more research heavy than mine. <laughs> So Coastal Sense was a brand right around the beginning of beauty YouTube that was so popular, prolific. Everybody had like the 88 palettes, the 252 palettes, these giant eyeshadow palettes that were great for when you're wanting to just start to get into makeup if you don't know what you're doing. If you're kind of like, I just wanna try a bunch of colors and I don't wanna spend a bunch of money. Here's this 88 shadow palette for $20. Like if you go to my early YouTube videos, I used that for a while. And I ended up giving the palette to my sister because she didn't have really any makeup. And I'm like, you use it. Cause I was buying more eyeshadow palettes at that point. But right around like early YouTube, early beauty YouTube, people like X Sparkage and like I said, Purse Buzz and Encore, Bub's Beauty, uh, It's Judy Time, um, the Fowler Sisters. So many people, so many people use those palettes so early on because they were so accessible. They were inexpensive for what it was. You buy an 88 shadow palette for $20. Now, when I look at a shadow palette that large, I'm like, oh, that's way too big for me because I know what I like. But if you're just getting into makeup and you don't want to spend a ton of money, it was great for that. And they had their hot pots, which was just their single shadows that you could put into individual palettes. You could build your own. Um, they had lip stuff. They didn't really do big on uh, complexion things, but eyeshadows, blushes, they ended up doing a lot of like kind of dupe 
products like blush books. They duped some Tarte products. They duped the Naked palettes with their Revealed palette. It wasn't like explicitly duped, but it was basically a dupe. You had a lot of people going and buying those Revealed palettes because they didn't want to spend $50 at Urban Decay. The quality did hold up for the price. Like I wouldn't say the quality was like the greatest quality in the world, but if you're spending $20 on 88 eyeshadows, like if you're expecting those shadows to be like the greatest quality, you know, the quality because of the price per gram is not gonna be that great. And the palettes were very similar to like old Morphe palettes, old crown brush palettes. They also were very big in brushes. People would get brush kits, brush packs, individual brushes. I had some brushes from Coastal Scents. They were one of the first ones that really hit that YouTube market because of word of mouth. And I think the reason why they kind of fell out of popularity over the years is that they really didn't kind of hone in on that influencer marketing eventually. Like brands like Morphe really, really did well. Unfortunately, um, Sigma did their affiliate program and Makeup Geek did an affiliate program and they weren't necessarily making a lot of the things that were really unique or were that special. And they were getting overshadowed by other brands like Morphe and like BH Cosmetics in similar price ranges because a lot of those brands that were coming up were around the same price range. So Coastal Sense wasn't like alone in that market anymore. They had more competition and back in May, they went, they just closed kind of out of nowhere. Since then, there hasn't really been any sort of information about what's to come next because they did basically leave the name and the trademark up for sale. And if anybody wants to buy it and put out new products under the Coastal Sense line, they can, but it's been, yeah, it's been since May and Elle did her video at the end of July. There hadn't been any information since then. And it was kind of sad, honestly, when I saw that they were closing, I was like, that makes me sad. <laughs> it really does because that was such a time and it's such a, like a time capsule, like just a moment in YouTube beauty history. That's a simpler time, really. It was about people playing around with color and it was about people really just getting excited and doing like Harry Potter eyeshadow looks and like doing all these bright rainbow looks because they had every color that they could do. It was about the makeup and it was about the fun. It was about the color. It was about the artistry. It wasn't always about the like tea or the drama or the brands. Like it was, it was more about just the makeup. Back in May, they were just like, we're liquidating everything. Bye, thanks for being our customers for all these years. And you know, like how long have they been around? They've been around for a long time, but they didn't start making makeup initially. Like they were a bath bomb brand <laughs> when they first started. Dear customers, after 16 years of serving the makeup community with high quality products at affordable prices, our journey has now come to an end. We are proud that we are able to make a difference. Many of you have been growing up with our products like the 88 and 252 eyeshadow palette, the so much loved revealed palettes, as well as our extensive brush line. Sadly, Coastal Sense has had to close. A huge thank you to all of our customers and supporters. We wish you all the best. In Elle's video, she also went into this, that the owners of Coastal Sense never really seemed like they were that passionate about the makeup and they've gone on to do different things in like tech business. And it was probably COVID that was kind of the nail in the coffin because it caused so many issues with like delivery and shipping and, and sourcing materials and sourcing ingredients. And they were probably just like, this is not worth it anymore. Like, we just want to go do other things. Like, it's been 16 years and it, we're not seeing the kind of growth that we used to see. I mean, if I'd been doing it for that long and I saw that much of a plateau or like a, a downward slope, I wouldn't want to keep going either. And so it was sad to see for sure, but it wasn't surprising at all. Yeah, Coastal Sense. We miss you, rest in peace. <laughs> so those were all the brands I wanted to talk about in today's video. Um, thanks again so much to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video. You have no idea how excited I was, honestly. I would really appreciate it if you guys wanted to check out the link below. Seriously, it helps me so much. For today's song of the day, let's see. Actually, I'm wearing a Districts t-shirt, so let me see what Districts song I should do. Today's song of the day is Fourth and Roebling. Rebling? Rebling. From the Districts. It's an old song. It's from like six years ago. It is from their first record, I think. I love that song. It's great. I love all their songs. They're fantastic. I bought this t-shirt when I went to go see them at an outdoor show. It was awesome. They're one of my faves. Definitely put out one of my favorite records last year. Highly recommend them as a band. If you guys want to follow me anywhere on social media, my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Twitch, 
Instagram and Twitter are Abers07, and my Twitch is Abers without the 07, um, and it's also with a Z because I'm I made the username like a decade ago, and I thought I was quirky. Okay, like, <laughs> do I regret giving myself the dorkiest username? I don't know. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you are having a good week so far. I hope you have a good rest of your week. I appreciate you. Stay hydrated, get some sleep, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.